Good morning, everybody. I can see you starting to log in. We'll be starting in about two minutes or so. Lots of people starting to come in now, that's good. Morning, Alan. I just sent you a note. Morning, Alan. Tygo. Good morning, Alice. Good morning. Okay, so welcome today to uh, another session from the Asia Professional Development Online Trainings that we're doing through National Geographic Learning. My name is Andrew. I'm the host and facilitator today. Um, I'd just like to mention a couple of things before we get started uh, with our topic today. Some of you um, have already noticed that in the chat box, there is an option directly above where you type that says you can send to and at the moment, it probably says all panelists. If you can change that drop down box to say all panelists and attendees, that way people can actually see what you're typing. If it's all panelists, then it's only the hosts, myself and Will and a couple of other people who can actually see what you're typing. So please change it to all panelists and attendees. If you forget, we will remind you um, and that's okay. Um, Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, oh, as well, just one thing to mention, we will only use the chat box for interaction today uh, with some polls as well. Uh, you will see a couple of other options at the bottom of the screen, which include things like a Q&A button um, or a, uh, um, yeah, other, a couple of other options, raise hand option at the bottom. We won't use those today. We will only use the chat box, okay? Great. So we'll get started here. Let me introduce our speaker today, uh, Will Lachette. Will is a Delta uh, qualified teacher and trainer from the UK. Uh, he's been teaching English in Asia since, oh, in English in general since 2001. And he's had a lot of experience in private language schools in British and Korean universities. And he's also worked for the British Council in Singapore. He's done a lot of teacher trainings throughout Asia and different places like Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand. He's been all around Asia, doing lots of work with lots of teachers. And he's really, really interested in student engagement, increasing student motivation, and encouraging self-study and the use of technology as a learning tool, okay? Currently, Will is a teacher trainer for Asia at National Geographic Learning, and we're really excited to have him here with us today to talk about how to make uh, the classroom really flourish uh, by using the classroom presentation tool. And he's going to give you some examples of using that tool through the different National Geographic Learning programs. So welcome, Will. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for that nice introduction and um, welcome to everyone who's joined in. Um, I think we've got 40, 48 participants at the moment, so that looks pretty good. Um, I expect a few more to be joining uh, maybe in a few minutes time. Um, yeah, so welcome um, to helping your online classes flourish with a CPT. Um, I'm talking to you from sunny Singapore and I'm uh, in our office today. It's my first time in the office for two weeks. I've come in especially to do this webinar. Um, yeah, so it's, it's nice, nice to be here. Um, before we start, um, I would like to ask you, um, if you are on a computer today, I would like you to open a blank Word document, 
because we're going to we're going to do an activity using that later on. Um, could you just uh, type into the chat box now? Can you just type yes if you have access to your computer and a Word document? Okay, great. So I can see quite a few people responding. That's perfect. Um, and thank you for responding. Um, it's nice to know that I'm not just talking to myself, which you can sometimes feel giving a webinar. Um, that's perfect. So uh, I know at least some of you uh, will be able to do the activity later on. Um, I was also going to say, um, yeah, please, uh, please respond, okay, in the chat box. Um, but it looks like you, you're a very responsive group. So thank you very much. I feel very connected to you already. Um, just to um, to remind you about what Andrew mentioned a minute ago, um, in your Zoom webinar chat box, um, you can change the settings. Um, so please uh, set your chat settings to all panelists and attendees. That way, everybody can see uh, what you are typing. Okay, so we're going to move on um, and have a look at what we're talking about today. So we're looking at two um, of our National Geographic Learning adult titles and the CPTs from them. Uh, so the first one we're looking at is Life, the second edition. Um, I wonder if any of you have taught this before. Um, can you type yes if, if any of you have used this in the classroom? Okay, Christopher, you've used it. Okay, Tiago, Alice. Okay, good. So a few of you are familiar with it. So this is, um, this is absolutely one of my favorite titles from National Geographic Learning. Um, I think it's uh, when you pick it up and look at it, it's, um, it's the title that has the closest look and feel to uh, a National Geographic magazine. You know, it's, um, it's full of amazing photography, fascinating articles, human interest stories, uh, video from National Geographic. Um, and I, you really feel that you're traveling the world um, when, you, when, you, uh, when you are teaching or learning from this series. Um, the second title uh, we're going to be using is World Link, the third edition. Um, and again, this is another one of my favorite titles, which is why I'm using it. And, um, you know, it, it also has the very interesting, engaging topics, but it also has um, a different approach. Um, it, has, uh, it has a really good sense of humor, this title. Um, it has a very strong video component. Um, it has five different videos per unit. And um, it also has, uh, in my opinion, the best teacher's book or lesson planner that I've ever seen in any title. So uh, that's a really big plus for teachers if you're using this. Okay, so this series of uh, webinars that we're doing um, is uh, using technology online. And obviously at the moment, the, the whole world is really switching to teaching online. And this is a big change for a lot of us. Um, and it's easy to focus on the technology. And as we've put on the slide here, um, it makes learning lively and easily accessible. Um, but we also need to remember, um, and I want to mention it, that the focus um, should always be on the content and not on the technology. So it's the content that, that teaches people and the technology is the tool that makes that possible when teaching online. Um, so, so to summarize, um, my, my way of thinking is that our aim is to use the technology to present content in the best possible way. Um, but we still need to focus on that content. Teaching online isn't just about, show, you know, about showing YouTube videos and, and things like that. Okay, so the purpose of the CPT, let's have a look. Now, um, I've been saying CPT a lot. Um, does anybody know what CPT stands for? Um, I wonder if anyone can type that into the chat box. Does anybody know? Eileen says no. Christopher knows, there we go. Okay, Alice knows, perfect. So yeah, a CPT, uh, it stands for Classroom Presentation Tool. So what, so what is it? What does that mean? I mean, um, it, it's a digital visual aid for learners. Um, we use it to create engagement with the students with interactivity, multimedia, and games. And lastly, um, it's a digital toolbox for teachers. Um, so at a very simple level, um, a CPT is, a, is an interactive digital version of the student book with many other resources that you can use. 
So this is the purpose of the CPT. So next, the obvious question is, if this is a classroom presentation tool, is it relevant to be using this online? And the answer is yes. Um, in my opinion, it's the perfect online teaching tool. Um, obviously, we don't have a real physical classroom when we're teaching online, but we, we have a virtual one through a platform like today we're using Zoom. Um, so for the purpose of this uh, webinar, we were thinking of the CPT as a course presentation tool. Um, it's the perfect tool because it's digital. Um, it has all the materials uh, from the student book and a lot of other materials as well. Um, it's still engaging. It's still interactive, even though it's online. Um, this is something important. That the students don't have to look at their books. So if, if, we, if we're relying on the students opening, having their books, um, it means that they will be uh, looking down and not looking at the screen. And when they're looking down, like I'm doing now, um, you know, I can tell you I'm, I'm looking at page 38, but really you have no idea um, what I'm looking at. And I, I could be uh, on, on my mobile phone uh, and you wouldn't know. So what, what the teacher really wants to do, um, if, you, uh, if you can see all of your students, you want to have them looking at the screen so you can see if they're paying attention. So if all the information is on the screen, um, it's much easier to see which students are paying attention. This is very important. Um, the last thing is um, it is an offline tool. So this is something you download onto your computer. Um, and this is really important when you're presenting online because the last thing you want is your bandwidth to be taken up and to lose connectivity um, in the middle of, of your lesson. So because it's offline, um, that makes things much more stable when you're presenting. Uh, by the way, today, uh, one of the main reasons I'm in the office is because I have got a wired connection to the internet. Um, I think presenting lessons online via Wi-Fi is a little bit risky um, because you always seem to lose connectivity right at the very moment that you don't want to. So um, yeah, having something online, less bandwidth, this is very important. Um, here are my objectives for today's webinar are as follows. Um, so we're going to show how CPTs are effective, uh, resource for teaching online. I'm going to share some tips and tricks for using the CPT online and I'm gonna demonstrate some activities using multiple tools. So um, it's not just about using the, the features of the CPT by themselves. Um, we can find if we combine the different tools, we can get a much more satisfying result. Okay, so we're now going to go in uh, to the first CPT we're looking at, which is uh, World Link. And we're going to be looking uh, from uh, using level two and um, we're going to be doing activities from unit three. Um, I'm just going to pause my share for a moment um, while I set up my screen. So just bear with me for a moment. And I'm, so I'm just gonna stop there and then reshare my screen. Okay, here we go. So um, I need to make sure I've got my chat box up as well. Okay, there we go. So um, can everybody see, oh, can everybody see the, the double spread that I've got up there? Looks great. Yes, thank you, Alice. And it does, doesn't it? This is something I wanted to mention that um, using the CPT, um, it's, it's really lovely because when you get a big uh, spread like this, a big double page uh, photo, um, it really looks perfect. And uh, in some ways looks even better than in the book because in the book you have that uh, crease down the middle of the, down the, middle of the spread. Um, but yeah, it looks really wonderful. And you can really get, um, you can really get uh, you know, a lot of engagement through these beautiful photos that we have. Um, so I'm going to show you um, uh, some of the basic tools we've got at the bottom here. So we've got um, the window shade, which I can use to hide parts of the screen. We've got Zoom. Uh, we've got an eraser and we've got some um, editing tools like a highlighter and a pen. Uh, you can adjust the size and colors of these. And I'm just going to mention that um, as this is a, vis a visual aid, um, in my opinion, uh, the most important one of these um, is going to be the, the, zoom, the zoom tool. And I'll just show you why. Um, you know, looking at that, we can see the picture, uh, but perhaps the, um, the text may be a little bit small. Um, so if I want to... Uh, 
um, focus students' attention on that, I can just um, I can just use the the Zoom tool. I can click there, and that brings the question uh, um, the questions up right in the middle of the screen, um, and then students can read those much more easily. Um, and the same thing um, if I want to focus down here on the um, on the picture description, I can also make that bigger so they can easily see it. Um, the other way that you can zoom in here, um, if I'm using the pointer, if I just double click on the screen, um, I can zoom in and then I can move, uh, I can move the screen around. I double click to exit. Um, I'm just gonna show you um, a couple of other things. So um, using the pen, um, if I, if, I want to, if I want to annotate on here, so let's say I want to do um, some vocabulary work, um, so I can, um, I, can use, uh, I can use a pen, okay, and I can add some of the, uh, some extra vocabulary. Um, I can write that on the screen um, so that students have the spellings. Um, so yeah, we can, we can also highlight, uh, highlight anything that we think is important. Um, yeah, so this is some of the basic functions that we have. Um, I'm going to show you uh, just quickly how we navigate. So um, up on here, we've got the uh, we've got the unit, so I can click on any unit that I want. Um, and once I uh, once I click on the unit, I can go through and I can choose the page that I want. So I'm going to go back to the unit opener. Um, and the other way uh, that I can navigate, I, if I know the page, I can just type the page in. So I want to go to page 67, okay, and I can hit return. Um, I can also scroll backwards and forwards. So we are going to be going to page 32, and we are going to be, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a demo lesson um, using the, uh, the beginning of lesson A. Uh, so this lesson A is entitled, You're in Luck. Um, and uh, this is the first lesson. There are two lessons in each unit, and this is from the Mysteries unit in level two. So we're going to zoom in. Um, so I can zoom in by double clicking, and I'm going to move this so you can see uh, you can see the picture in the middle of your screen. And um, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a few questions. So I'd just like you to type into the chat box for me, please. So just type in what can you see in this picture? A waterfall, that's right, so on the left, we've got a beautiful waterfall. Uh, anything else? A dangerous road, a truck, a U-shaped highway, a zigzag road, a cliff. Okay, very nice. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot of different ideas. Someone going camping, a switchback, great vocabulary there. Um, yeah, so someone mentioned it's a, it's a dangerous road, um, a mountain road. We've got a cliff, there are uh, rocks here. So the next question for you, um, what kind of, uh, the unit is about luck. So what kind of unlucky things do you think could happen in this type of setting? What kind of unlucky things? Accidents in capitals, that's right. Uh, what type of accidents? A landslide, great landslide, car crash, rockfall. Uh, we've got poverty, okay, car accident, miss the view. Okay, so yeah, all of these different kind of problems that we might have. Um, so what I would be doing here in the lesson, I, I would be I would be writing these ideas down, okay, so that we can come back to them later. And uh, the purpose of these activities um, is to start getting to students think about um, think about the the content of the lesson before we uh, we actually go into the the listening. So we mentioned what unlucky things could happen. I'm going to introduce you now um, to uh, to the luckiest unlucky man to ever live. So this is a true story about a man called Frayn Selak, the unluckiest, the luckiest unlucky man to ever live. So I'm going to show you um, how some of the activities work in WorldLink. Um, so here we've got an interactive, um, an interactive question where we're going to, uh, it's a gap fill, we're going to move the words into the sentence. And um, we can help our students with this and we can get them to type in what the words are. So it says here Frayn has many. Um, so we've got the word many, so we're looking for a word, we're looking for a noun, we're looking for a plural noun. Um, so which word should I choose? Yeah, so we're going to go for accidents. Uh, next one, it says that was, okay, so we've got, we've got B here. Um, so what we're looking for, um, we're looking for an adjective. Uh, now accidents, are they good or bad? 
they're clearly bad. So the word we want is going to be unlucky. That's right. But he, okay, so he, so we're going to look for a verb and we're going to put that in. Okay, and finally, um, he survived. Is that good or bad? That's good. So we're going to put lucky into here. So as we're doing the activity, we want to uh, talk to our students, we want to help them, okay, explain the process, um, and then they can type in the words and we can put them in. Once we've got the answers there, uh, we can click show answers and we can say that we've got 100% all green ticks. Okay, congratulations, everybody. Okay, we got that exercise done perfectly. Uh, you can reset and you can do it again. Um, if you get it wrong, um, uh, here we go. Um, let's say if I put this one in here, uh, that was survived. Um, if I put that in, okay, click it tells me it's wrong and then we can do it again. Okay, so that's the first activity. Um, I'm just going to go back to what we did earlier where I was asking you the, the questions uh, about the picture because um, I, I forgot to mention this. So um, you can see this little red icon. If I click on this, um, this gives you, um, these are teacher's notes or teacher tips, um, and this gives you extra uh, notes and details and activities that you can use. So what I did there, asking the questions, all, all of those questions are from this. Um, and if you want to use this um, while you're teaching, uh, all you need to do is uh, pause the share. Um, if you're using Zoom, you can pause, and then you can get this up, okay, and you can use the activity and the students can't see it. Um, so there's lots of these useful teacher tips throughout the, throughout the book, okay, which really, um, you know, they're right there when you need them and it makes it very easy to teach. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to actually watch the video um, about Frain. Um, I, I think it's a really interesting video. Um, and before we do, um, I'm going to show you this activity. So these little plus activities, these are ones which you can only find on the CPT. They're not in the student book. They're not in the teacher's book. You'll only find them on the CPT. And um, there are four questions here, which I'm going to ask you to look at um, and try and find the answers to as we're watching the video. So what was Frayne's first accident? Bus crash, plane crash, train crash. How did Frayne survive the plane crash? The plane landed safely, he was sucked out of the window or he jumped with a parachute. What happened in the bus accident? The bus skidded off the road, the bus caught fire, and the bus hit another car. And finally, in his last car crash, what happened? His hair caught fire, he was hit by a bus, or he jumped out of the window. So these are our four questions. Okay, so we're going to watch the video, and I would like you to listen carefully and try and answer these questions for me. Okay, I just need to make sure I am sharing my computer sound, which I think I'm doing. Um, again, can, can you type in, if you can hear the video, can you type yes? An elderly music teacher from Croatia, and depending on how you... Perfect, okay. Perfect, perfect. So, um, I'm going to put on, I'm going to put on the subtitles, because uh, I think that's useful. And I am going to maximize the screen. I'm just going to show you before we start. We do have the script here. Okay, so you have access to, um, if you need to analyze what is said, you have that access there. And I'm now going to, yes, Julie, I'm going to enlarge the screen. Um, and we're going to watch the video. So please enjoy. And depending on how you look at it, either the world's unluckiest or the world's luckiest person to ever live. His unbelievable yet true story begins on a cold winter's day in 1962. Traveling from Sarajevo to Dubrovnik, a fault with the line caused his train to jump the track and plunge into the freezing river below. While other passengers were killed in the crash or drowned in the sinking wreckage, suffering a broken arm, Frayn managed to escape and swim to shore. Little did Frayne know at the time, but this incident marked the beginning of a series of bizarre events that would occur over the next 40 years of his life. The following year, while traveling aboard a small plane bound for Rijeka, disaster struck for a second time. Mid-flight, both engines stopped working, cabin pressure dropped, and the plane began losing altitude. You might have thought that this was probably the worst thing that could have happened, but you'd be wrong. While the plane plummeted towards the ground, a malfunctioning door blew off and poor Frayne was sucked out of the aircraft. 
Tumbling through the air without a parachute, Frayn must have thought he was a goner. But while the plane crashed into the side of a hill, killing all 19 on board, Frayn somehow managed to land in a haystack and survived with only minor injuries. Another two years went by before Frayn's next brush with death. This time, while traveling by bus, ice on the road caused the wheels to lock up and the vehicle skidded through the safety guard and into the valley below. Four passengers were killed, but not Frayn. Tired, or perhaps terrified, of public transport, Frayn began to travel mostly by car. But that didn't seem to help either. In 1970, his car engine burst into flames, but Frayn was able to jump free before it exploded. Then, three years later, in 1973, the fuel pump in his new car ruptured, causing another engine fire. But this time, the flames were blown straight at him through the air vents. Needless to say, he survived this too, albeit with less hair than he began with. In 1995, he survived being hit by a bus. And in 1996, a careless truck driver forced him off the side of a mountain road. His car plunged 300 feet and exploded in a ball of flames. But Frayn wasn't in it. Having somehow jumped out of the window, he was found clinging to a tree some way down the cliff face. Now, Frayn's story may have ended there, as since then, Frayn hasn't been involved in any other death-defying incidents. However, there is one last twist to this man's incredible story. In 2003, at the age of 72, Frayn bought a lottery ticket his first one in over 40 years. He won the jackpot, safely securing his place as the luckiest unlucky person to ever live. Okay, and and we are back. Okay, so I, I just find that absolutely incredible. Um, a true story, an absolutely true story. This really did happen. Um, and there we are proving that uh, fact is stranger than fiction. Um, I'd just like to ask you just, just to get your feedback because I, I, like I like this story so much. Um, what did you think of it? So um, in the chat box, if you can give it between one and five stars. So if you hated the video, if you thought it was boring, give it a one. And if you really liked it, give it a five. So what, what did you think? There we go. We've got all five stars. Amazing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really fascinating. And I like the, I like the way it's presented there. Um, it's good narration. And as I said, um, you could also, um, you can send, uh, you can give them the text because you've got the text there. So you could give the students the text to read. Um, and I think the students would really be interested in that. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, perhaps a little bit, um, a little bit sad what happened to him. But what happened at the end? What was the, what was the, 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 the great thing that happened to him at the end? He, he, he won the lottery. That's right. He won the lottery, the jackpot. So really uh, an incredible life that, uh, that Frayn had. Okay. So um, let's, let's have a look um, and see, see how we can get on. So, um, We've got these, uh, these questions with three answers. So if we call them A, B, and C, okay, let's see um, if we can get the answer right. So number one, what was Frayn's first accident? So what do we think? Is it A, B, or C? Everyone's going for C. Okay, so we'll put in train crash. Um, how about number two? How did Frayn survive the plane crash? A bit more difficult. Uh, we've got Bs. Okay, so we're going to go for B. He was sucked out of the window. Uh, number three, what happened in the bus accident? The bus skidded, the bus hit another car, or the bus caught fire. I'm seeing A, A, most of you are saying A, so let's put that one. Okay, and number four, in his last car crash, the la there were two, weren't there? So um, three, in fact, what happened? He, um, his hair caught fire, was hit by a bus, or he jumped out of the window. Everyone's putting A, his hair caught fire okay so we'll put that in uh, we'll go back to number one and we're going to show the answers so that was correct well done okay that was uh, c uh, number two was b number three a and number four c correct so we've got everything right okay that's 100 percent. okay so well done so this is a very nice interactive um interactive uh, lesson that we can do a really nice video to get their attention we've got some nice questions there um we're then going to move on um, and have a look at some of the questions which are actually um, in the actually in the students book um, which we can also present um, using the classroom presentation tool 
So next um, in B, uh, we've got a kind of ordering exercise. So we've got seven events, we need to put them in order. And then the next exercise is matching um, why was he lucky. So we have to match the, uh, the unlucky event to why he was lucky. So let's do the first one of these. Um, so this, uh, you can see that these, I can move these up and down um, to put them in the right place. Um, so we're not going to do all of this, um, but again, uh, the way to make this interactive is to use the chat box. Um, I mean, what you could do, you could ask the students to type out in order all seven of them and send the whole lot through the chat box. Um, and then you could, um, you could, you know, you could um, announce the winner, the first student to get all seven in the correct order, uh, correctly spelled, correctly typed, you know, they, they win the activity. Um, or you could just... Um, you can just ask them to type in the numbers, which is what we're going to do to save a bit of time. So from these seven, which of these happened first in the story? Um, so which were number six? So yes, that's right. So no, the train crash was first, wasn't it? So I'm just gonna put that up to the top. Um, and which one came next? So after the train crash, which was second? So I've got three, five, yeah, okay, I think it was the, I think it was the plane crash. So we can go through and do it and, you know, and do it like this. Um, we can just use the numbers to do it. Now, obviously, usually um, we would play the video again, okay, so the students get another chance. Um, once we're finished, um, we can, we can hit uh, and we can see what the answers are. Okay, so train, plane, bus. Okay, so we're going to do um, the next activity, um, which, and this is where you're going to need your Word document. Um, so I uh, hope some of you have got that ready. Um, so the question is, why was Frayn lucky each time? Match the events with a reason. So I'm going to click in here and have a look. Um, and I'll just show you how, um, if we just want to use the, the CPT as it is, the exercise, um, we're, we're just dragging and dropping. So his car went off a mountain road. His car went off a mountain road. Uh, but what happened, Frain jumped out and landed in a tree. So this is how we do it. We drag and drop. Uh, we can click on there and it tells us if the answer is correct. Um, I, wa I want to do this, um, I want to do it a different way because I, I want it to be a little bit more interactive. So I'm going to do it, I'm going to open it up again. And what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to copy uh, the text here. And I just highlighted it and I'm just going to click on it with my mouse. And I can then drag that into uh, a Word document and I can open it. Um, and now I've got all of that information here in my Word document. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going, to, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to enter it into the chat box. Okay, so I've just entered it into your chat box. Um, and now, so what I'd like you to do now, I would like you to cut and paste from the chat box. Okay, so if nobody types anything for a moment, so it doesn't move. Okay, and then so just highlight in the chat box, right click and copy. And then um, you can go into your Word document and you should be able to copy it uh, straight into the Word document. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to see if that's working okay. Okay, so has that worked? Okay, I've managed to do it. I've, I've done it. Ha has anybody managed to copy that text from the chat box onto a Word document? Yes. Okay, perfect. There we go. So, so what we've got here, um, you know, when, I, when I'm teaching in the classroom, um, I, I always seem to spend um, a lot of time uh, photocopying, cutting and cutting up little bits of paper. Um, because I like doing these, um, these kinesthetic activities. I like doing, you know, matching activities. Um, but, but it takes a lot of time. So this, what we're going to do now, this is the digital version that requires no effort from the teacher's part, okay? So now the students can do it themselves. Um, so we did the first one, his car went off a mountain road, um, and we said that Frayn jumped out and landed in the tree. So if I highlight that, if I copy it, and then I can paste that here, and now what I can do is I can cut that whole sentence, and I can put it into the chat box, 
and there we go there we can see the answer so so what what we can do um, again we can set the whole activity for our students once they've got it they can cut and paste this together and then put it straight into the chat box and you can check their answers so i'm going to ask you to do uh, actually i got my, my mind i just noticed mine is wrong i've put plane crash he jumped out and landed in a tree that's wrong isn't it <laughs> um so i would like you to do plane crash okay he was in the plane crash i would like you to put the correct answer and then copy and paste that into the chat box and we're just going to do one of them so he was in a plane crash what was the lucky event that saved him friend he was in a plane crash it wasn't the tree there we go ashley ashley wendorf he was in a plane crash a door blew off and flame frame landed in the haystack so ashley congratulations okay you you're the winner okay of this activity we're just going to do one just to give you the idea um, and while we're talking about um, having a winner, um, I think this is, um, it, it's a nice idea when you're online or in the classroom anyway, to introduce some kind of prize, some kind of incentive. Um, so I thought um, if you're doing the whole activity, um, maybe something you could do. Um, if you've got a longer class, maybe you need a break in the middle. As a prize, you could ask, um, you know, the student who wins the activity, they could choose, for example, a YouTube song to listen to just to relax for a few minutes. Um, you could also uh, give them the opportunity maybe to ask the teacher a question, uh, depending on how well you get on with your students. Um, you could also maybe get them to nominate the next student who has to answer a question. So, um, you know, just, just thinking of a few different ways that you can, you know, uh, give motivation for people to answer and also to make it a bit more fun. Okay, there we go. Great. So that is, um, that is as much as we're going to do about Frame today. So I, I really hope that you enjoyed, um, enjoyed the video and the activities there. Um, there are, just to show you, there are, um, speaking, uh, there are speaking activities that you can do here. Um, we're not going to do them today, but I'm going to talk about speaking activities a little bit later. Just going to show you um, a couple more of the features here. So we've got... Um, We've got flashcards, so we can use this as a game. Um, so the flashcards here, they give us a definition, and then um, you know we can ask the students, uh, you know, what the word is. So happening to avoid bad things, and have good things happen to you. Um, so what is the word? And then we flip over the card, and we can see it's lucky. Uh, we can also check the pronunciation. Lucky. Lucky. Clicking on here, so we can also use this as a game, and we can use it to practice pronunciation. And when we think the students have mastered it, we can actually uh, delete it from the deck. Okay, and one more. Uh, we've got another game that we can do, which is a pelminism um, or a memory game, and we can ask students again to make this interactive. We can call on a student to choose which ones they want, so they could give you the row number and the column number. So maybe they could say row number one, column number three. Unlucky. So we're looking for the opposite. We want the word lucky. Um, so we could go for maybe row three, uh, column two. And I wasn't lucky enough, I, I, I didn't get it that time. Okay, but we can call on each student in turn um, and get them to, uh, yeah, to take a turn each. Um, it doesn't matter, they could, they could write down the words um, on a piece of paper, that's fine. You give them good practice actually in, in writing and spelling the words. We could also get them to use their microphone when it's their turn. They could just tell you which one they want. They could also read out, uh, you could have them read out the words and then you could correct their pronunciation. So um, yeah, this is uh, lots of flexibility that you can use here. Okay, so we are going to move on um, and we're going to have a look at uh, life. So I'm just going to uh, pause my screen for a moment, um, just while I set up, just while I'm setting up the, the life activity. Okay, and I think everything is looking good over here. All right, there we go. So um, yeah, we're gonna have a look at a few activities from our life classroom presentation tool. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the main features that we have from this one. 
So uh, let me share my screen again. Uh, so resume. Okay, and we're back. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes, okay, perfect. Now, we're looking at something. What, what can you see? Any ideas? It's not easy to guess. I've got a question mark, a rock, something. We're looking at something, a planet. Yes, it does look like a planet, doesn't it? Um, so this is uh, part of a building, the inside of an oyster. Very interesting, marble. Um, so what we're looking at here, we're looking at um, a special function that we've got on the life uh, CPT, which is a spotlight. So I can actually, we're looking at a, a, a large picture um, and we're looking at a small part of it, seafloor, very interesting. So I can actually move this around um, and show you different parts of the picture. We've got here sea, sea floor, right? Okay, you are absolutely in the right area. Um, sea floor, and we've got something over here, uh, something yellow, coral. Um, does anybody know, can anyone have a guess what they think this might be? We've got here a fish, right? Well, let's have a look. Okay, there we go. Under the sea, and it is Kitty, well done. Okay, we've got Nemo, Ellen says it's Nemo. Um, we've got a very cute little, uh, fish there. Um, where is the fish? That's the thing, we're gonna have a look. Is it in a fish tank? Do you think it's in a fish tank? Do you think it's in the sea? i show you the whole fish here. And um, what do you think? Is, this a, is it a big fish or a small fish? What do you think? A goldfish, small fish. Okay, people are saying small fish. Why, why do you think it's a small fish? How do you know? What makes you think that? In the sea with corals around. Okay, it's too cute to be big, okay. Um, yeah, so we can have a look around. And um, what's this here? So we've got something. Um, does this look natural or man-made? You see, it looks very round. Okay, natural. Natural hermit crab. Natural. Okay, natural. It's perfectly round. Look at that. Um, okay, and we've got over here. How about this? Does that look natural or man-made? That looks man-made, right? We can tell that it's got some lettering, number and lettering on there. Um, does anybody have any idea where this fish is? Like, um, it, it's in something. It's in an object that you probably use every day. Can anyone guess what it might be? Marble, a wreck. Okay, so I'm going to reveal, right? A plastic bottle. That's a good, good guess. Keychain, aquarium. Okay, I'm going to reveal it, okay? So after three, okay, one, two, three... Okay, so what have we got? Is it a bottle? It's a can, that's right. So this, is, this tiny little fish is inside some kind of can, a soft drinks can. Um, yeah, maybe it's a beer can. Yeah, okay, maybe it's a beer can, I'm not sure. Um, I just, you know, this picture, I, I just looked at it, I thought it, it's so amazing. Um, and, and using this spotlight tool, um, it's a way, uh, someone mentioned earlier, it's a way of making it a bit more dramatic and it's a way of drawing you know, drawing the students in um, so that they, you know, so that you've got their attention. Um, and this topic, um, I, I really like, uh, I really like what this topic is. Uh, we can see here, this is about uh, living space. <laughs> so this is talking about uh, the places people live. Um, and this uh, photo was taken, uh, this photo is taken uh, in Honshu in Japan and the type of fish it's a yellow goby okay who's who's living inside living inside this can and um, so this is an activity that you can do um, I'm going to zoom out um, so we can see the whole the whole um, the whole page there um, yeah and I'm just going to show you one other thing we can do so um, I haven't showed you the shade yet so I'm just going to um, put uh, put my shade up up here um, and we can do the, a similar sort of thing so rather than using the um, the flashlight um, spotlight we can also use the shade like this so we can do the same thing we can slowly reveal okay and get students to type in um, yeah get the, the students to type in what they think they can see you can stop it there okay maybe you'd stop it somewhere like that and get them to guess um, so um, something the CPT is really good for is 
it's a visual aid, but we can use it to limit what they can see. Um, and this is often very, um, very beneficial for teaching because we can really control the information that we're giving them. So we give it at the right time. And that's something that you can't do um, in the classroom so well when, when they're looking at their books, because uh, I'm sure you've had the same situation that I've had that when students from their books, sometimes, you know, students aren't, they're not even on the right page. Okay. Or even, you know, if they are on the right page, they might be looking at the wrong part of the page. They might be, you know, they're, they're supposed to be you know, reading this article and they're doing something else over there. So it's something really, um, really useful that you can you can use. So actually, no, this this feature is not available in WorldLink. Um, WorldLink does have the um, WorldLink does have the the shade, um, but it doesn't have the spotlight. Okay, so we do have the shade, but not the spotlight in WorldLink. So Life actually has a, a few a few features that you won't find on WorldLink. Okay, so that is our little fish. Okay, so how long have we got? We've got 15 minutes left. Okay, so we're going to do um, a reading activity um, and uh, I'm going to navigate to the page that I want. This is on page 10. Um, so I just typed that into, into the, the corner here and that takes me straight to the page that I want. Um, oh, you can see here I have been, uh, I've been doing something on here. So um, I want to clear my annotations. So I'm going to clear those. So we've got a nice clean page. Um, this is slightly different to WorldLink. Um, so I'll show you um, in WorldLink. If you remember, we, we clicked on, a, on an icon to take us into the activity. But in life, um, first of all, every, every single uh, activity has its own page and we just click on we click on the page um, on the area on the page and it takes us straight into the activity so this is a nice activity um, about uh, cultural identity and it's based on hats so we've got five hats here you can see it's nicely presented very big okay and again we're focusing the students attention on exactly what we want them to look at um, rather than um, you know just starting to read for example, um, I found that teaching reading, when I want my students to read, they often don't want to, but when I want them to do something else, they start reading. Um, so this way, yeah, we know that they're looking at this. Um, so, and they have, to, they have to guess where the hats are from. Um, let me go out of here. And, Oh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go to the second, the second activity. So what we could do, and this is the way it's presented in the CPT. So we've got the reading here. Okay. And we've, and we've got the hats. And um, then uh, when we've done the activity, um, we, we can hit view feedback and it, it just gives you the answers. It puts them up there. So we, you know, we could ask the students to do the activity and then we can just give them the answers. Um, but this is not, it's not very interactive and it's not really helping them with their reading skills. Um, it's not showing them how to find the answers. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it, which I feel um, is, uh, is, is a more beneficial way of doing it for the students. So first we're going, we're going to Zoom. And this is another feature that's different to WorldLink. Um, with, with Life, when, when I zoom to region like this, um, it actually isolates whatever I'm showing you so that there are no distractions around the page. So students can only see exactly what I want them to see. And I can make that as big as I can. Um, and now that's very easy to read. Um, and the activity we're going to do is we're, we're, we predicted where the hats are from, um, which country, and now we're gonna try read and we're gonna try and find out where they're from. And I'm gonna show you the answers using the highlighter tool. So we're gonna start with green. I like green and we're gonna read through. Um, I'm just going to get my chat box back. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to ask you to do it. So we're going to read through. I want you to find what's the first type of hat that you can find for reading, starting at the top of the paragraph. What's the first hat type that you can see? Bush hat. Okay, well done. Uh, Tiago, you were first. So one, that's one point to Tiago. Okay, so I'm going to highlight uh, bush hat in green. Um, and now we're going to read around the bush hat. So we found the hat, we need to find where it's from. So we need to read around. Now, sometimes the answer is before, sometimes the answer might come afterwards. So we're going to read the sentence from before. And what is the country? Where is the bush hat from? It is from Australia. So we're going to highlight bush hat and Australia in green. I'm now going to change to yellow. 
what is the next hat type that you can find? So carry on reading. What is the second hat type? Baseball cap. Okay, so we're going to go down baseball cap. Okay, and which country? Where is it from? The United States. Very good. Well done, Anna. Okay, one point to you. Um, so we can see here, and it's worth pointing out to the students that in the first example, um, the word, the country came before the hat, and in the second one, the country came after the hat. So this reinforces, you know, when, when students are, you know, they're trying to find information in the text, they have to read before and after. Um, and we can really show this nicely by, by illustrating with the colours here. Um, let's go to the next one, orange. Um, the next type of hat, bowler hat. Tracy, well done. Or Anna, you also had that one. Okay, bowler hat. And can you see a country for bowler hat? Mexico. So it does say Mexico, but if we look before, I'm looking out of my window. I live in central London and nobody is wearing a bowler hat. So we actually want to link bowler hat to London, which of course isn't, isn't a country. It's a, it's a city. Um, but we might want to teach our students. So London, where is it? Okay, London is in the UK or Great Britain or England. Okay, this can be very confusing. This is where I'm from. Um, so we can add that there, okay, and we can put that in. Um, let's go back to the highlighter. Okay, we finish. We've got two more to go. So we're going to change the color to red. Uh, the next hat you can see, sombrero. Okay, I'm sorry, my pronunciation perhaps is not quite what it should be. And where is the sombrero from? From Mexico, and we know that. Now it's not the country, it's Mexican. Okay, so here we've got the adjective, okay, to, to well, uh, actually in this case, a uh, noun, okay, plural noun. Um, so we're using the noun form, okay, Mexican rather than Mexico, noun for the person. And the last one, we're gonna change to pink. And the last hat you can see, the straw hat. Thank you, Alice. And this is from Vietnam. Okay, and here we've got the adjective. Sorry, this one is the adjective. Okay, Vietnamese. All right, there we go. So we can see that um, there's a lot of information that we can give here. Rather than just giving the answers first, we can very clearly mark this so it's very visual. Secondly, we can look at the country. Um, we can see a city from a country. We can see a plural noun. Okay, we can see an adjective. So we have a lot of information that we can really show to our students rather than just putting the answers up on the screen. Um, and I, I think using these highlighting tools and the Zoom like this, I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a very effective way um, to teach reading skills because reading is difficult to teach. It's, um, it's not just about finding the answers, it's about showing the students how, how you find the answers. That's the, the important part. Okay, that's great. Um, so we're going to do uh, we're going to do one more activity. Um, so to get out of the situation I'm in now, okay, I'm just going to hit uh, down here on the zoom, and I'm going to hit reset, and that takes me back out. Notice that uh, all of your annotations remain on here. All of the notes you make, uh, you can also do with life. You can actually uh, you can type notes in, uh, and you can insert them. Uh, and all of this you can save. So with, with the Life CPT, um, if you're teaching, you know, if you're teaching the whole course, you can annotate all the way through, you can save it for each class, and then you can come back for revision. So any notes that you've written down here, you can access that um, and you can use that, to, you know, for revision, uh, for revision work later. So that's a very strong feature of the Life CPT, the fact that you can save it uh, individually for each class that you're teaching. Okay, so let's have a look. The last activity we're gonna do, uh, I'm going to need to pause my share again while I set up my activity. So if you can just bear with me for hopefully just one minute while I set this up. And I'm going to be showing you uh, an activity using, um, using the Zoom function. Um, and also using the shade function. Okay, and I'm all set up, so I'm going to resume. Resume the share from the Zoom menu. 
Okay, and what can we see? What can you see at the moment? Can you type into the, the chat box just to tell me what you can see? Nothing. Good, that's what we want. Okay, you can see nothing, perfect. A black screen, right. A blackboard, it does look like a blackboard, yeah. Um, so what I've done is I've zoomed into something and I have set up a, a screen so that you can't see it. I'm going to ask you um, a question and I'm going to reveal the picture for a limited amount of time and I want you to tell me what you can see. So I'm gonna give you maybe half a second, okay? So, and then I want you to type into the chat box, what can you see, all right? So three, two, one. And it's gone wrong. Right, stop, stop share, <laughs> it went wrong. Okay, uh, yeah, you type in, okay, type in what you can see while I, uh, while I get this sorted out. Okay. All right, let me get this back up here. Okay, sorry guys, just give me a few seconds. And you know, this, I think, you know, I might as well take the chance to say this. This, this is what is gonna happen when, when, you're, teaching on, when you're teaching online. You know, sometimes um, you're, you, know, you can be as prepared as you can ever be. And sometimes you do something and it just, it, for some reason it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, so, you know, that's okay. You know, you just have to ask your students to be a little bit, uh, a little bit patient. Um, I'm, I should be able to come back now and I'm going to share my screen again and uh, I just need to move this over here. Okay, there we go. So we said it's a food truck. Okay, so I'm, I'm back. All right. Um, I think you can see again. Um, so I'm going to ask you another question and hopefully this time uh, my screen doesn't disappear. Um, I want you to tell me um, how many languages can you see in this picture, okay, on the food truck. How many languages and what are the languages? So I'm gonna give you about two seconds. Okay, there we go. So please, can you type into the chat box? Okay, what, which languages did you see? I can see English, English and Spanish, two languages, English and Spanish, very good. Uh, Mexican, yes, right. I think they speak Spanish in Mexico. Okay, perfect. All right, and I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, so we've got the languages. Uh, next, what kind of food is on the menu? Okay, what kind of food? So I'm going to give you three seconds to look. Okay, three, two, one. That's gone wrong again. Okay, I'm hitting the wrong button there. Okay, well. I would just leave the picture up, okay? As the picture is up there, let, let's just leave it there. Um, so let's, uh, can you tell me, um, I just need to get my chat box back. What can we see? We can see snacks, sushi, spring rolls, okay, Japanese, okay, perfect, Mexican. So we've got, we've got Mexican, um, which is from uh, Central America. We've got spring rolls, we've got Japanese, that's Asian. Um, you know, so we can see that this is a very uh, multi- uh, multinational, uh, multicultural um, food truck. Um, you know, and what, what we can do here is we can try and introduce the theme, international food, that's right. And what is, the, what is one of the reasons that we have so much international food? Um, it's a word beginning with G. Um, can anyone think what it might be? How does food and other things spread? How does culture spread around the world? What's the process? Uh, begins with G. Globalism, yes, that's right, globalization, perfect. So this, this is actually um, a reading uh, text which is based on uh, globalization. And um, this is one way um, that we can introduce it. Um, again, uh, just to really um, introduce it with a bit more, uh, you know, to, get, to grab people's attention and to make it a bit more interactive. Um, I'm just gonna show you very quickly because I'm conscious of the time. Uh, we can also do this uh, with a text, okay? So if I can zoom in there, if I hit the select tool, 
and then the shade I can put my shade up here uh, and then I can control the shade using my mouse um, I, I like using this for speed reading so you give your students a question uh, we could say for example which countries can you see and then you give them uh, just three seconds and then you take it away and you get um, you know to write them down and this is a really good activity for working on uh, students reading speed um, because this is one of the problems students have um, often they're, 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 they're very slow readers so this is something we can do to help them with that okay and uh, that is bringing me uh, to the end um, so I um, I'm going to uh, offer up any um, questions that we might have. Um, let me just try and get my, my power plant back. Okay, so uh, any questions from anybody? Um, Andrew, have you been um, collating any questions that we've had? Uh, there's been a couple of questions, but uh, generally speaking, it's, we've answered them in the chat box, I think, well, so I think okay. we're okay. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, well, in that case, um, as we are coming up to the hour, um, I, I will begin to, to wrap up the session. Um, so before, uh, before we leave, um, I would like to, I would just like to mention that we have some, um, we have uh, lots more um, of our webinars coming up in our um, teaching online series. So we have a series of three um, starting on April the 8th um, with uh, Werner Kuhn. And he, um, he's a very experienced online teacher and he's going to be uh, doing three, uh, I think, very interesting sessions um, which will uh, definitely be of help to you if you are in the position where you're starting to teach online. Um, so please sign up for these, look out for them um, on Facebook, okay? And uh, please sign up for these. There will be lots of others as well. So make sure uh, you go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash ELT NGL Asia. Uh, you can scan the QR code here, uh, become a fan and you will be receiving uh, updates and events and so on and so forth from us. So please uh, like us on Facebook. And I hope to see you again at another webinar very soon. Okay, so thank you very much. And Andrew, is there anything else that we need to add? Yeah, there's a few questions come in here, Will. So we'll just take a quick okay. look at those sure. um, in the chat box here. So I'm going to go to the top here. Uh, one of the first ones was, uh, where can we get the CPT? So essentially, you can get it um, if you contact the National Geographic Learning Representatives. Now, some of you would have received um, email invitation or uh, you join through Facebook um, to join the session or maybe another medium. Um, so if you uh, reply back through those medium uh, media and ask um, for your local contact, then we can get you in touch with um, a local rep who can help you uh, get access to these kinds of tools. Okay. Um, yes, uh, as one question asked, these things are available on Mac. They're Mac or PC. It doesn't matter. Uh, a couple of other people asked, how do you deliver them? Like they're talking about Google Meet or just in Zoom. The classroom presentation tool is a piece of software that's on your computer, okay? And then however you share that, um, like for example, I, I do class in classes sometimes, or I do Zoom, or I do Google Hangouts, or the, the so many, or Skype, right? I do lots of different ways of sharing online. And essentially all you're doing is you're just sharing your Okay, with your presentation tool in this way. Okay, so uh, for Anna, which I was leaving till the end, um, asking about uh, online classes for kindergarten, right? Um, because obviously that's that's a thing that's starting to happen now as well. Um, if you see Werner's uh, sessions next week, he will be talking a lot about online classes and different age groups and things as well. And also next week, uh, we have a global uh, webinar that we're putting together specifically about very young learners. It's not focused directly on online, but we will be talking about online for kindergarten students as well. Okay. Um, so I hope that some of that answers some of those questions. Um, if anyone has any more, sorry, Will, I just did those really quickly just to try and... Yeah, that's fine. Them. No, you did a good job. Thank you. It was great. That's fine. 
We just try to help, right? Yeah. Okay. No, very good. So um, for those of you who have uh, further questions or comments, we will be sending out the recording and uh, a chance for you to provide some feedback in an email that will go out um, next week on Monday. So in the meantime, um, please, uh, yeah, keep in touch with us. Um, if you want to get in touch directly with Will or anyone else on the team, then we can help you do that as well. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to say one thing. I just saw a question there from Tiago saying, mm -hmm. how can we get students talking? And it was something actually I was going to talk about. Um, one thing you can do if you're using Zoom, for example, is you can use uh, the breakout rooms. So if you have a group of, I, I mean, 20 students or you know, 16, you can split them into groups of three or four um, and you can give them a, um, you can set them up with a, um, a speaking task. Um, and then you can do that two ways. You can either do it um, in the class, like live in the lesson, um, and then you can ask maybe one group to give you some feedback, um, or you could get them to do uh, extended speaking outside of the class. So you put them into groups and you get them to do it via WhatsApp or whatever and do the speaking task outside of class. So you can do it in class via the breakout rooms, or you can get them to do it for homework and then present um, in the lesson. Um, so I, I, I thank you for asking that question. That's, um, that's a useful one. Okay, all right. So um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for attending today. And I hope that you have, um, I hope that you've uh, found that useful. And um, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think the CPTs really are a perfect tool for you to use online. Very good. Thank you very much, Will. And we'll look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Please remember to join Werner's session next week. Um, I think we'll find that really useful to see what he's got to, to say to us. Okay, thank you very much all. Thank you.